Hello everyone, uh, I expect that you had gone through uh, the material that I had covered last time related to the reductions in organic chemistry. We will briefly look at what we did in the last lecture where we started with the reduction of uh, uh, the uh, ester, alpha beta unsaturated ester uh, with uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride where uh, the corresponding alcohol was formed CH2OH. And then uh, we uh, also looked at uh, the conditions where we had to heat it. So, it is requ it required approximately 55 degrees temperature. As uh, we can also look at it that the lactones uh, give the corresponding diol. And we compare it with uh, uh, the um, uh, diabol reductions. So, these, these were the ones which we discussed with lithium aluminum hydride. On the other hand, uh, we introduced the reagent diabol H and that allowed the conversion of uh, the ester to the uh, corresponding uh, alcohol or aldehyde depending on uh, the conditions such as solvent where participating or non participating solvents or temperature or uh, say for example, how many equivalents of diisobutyl aluminum hydride are used. Then we also looked at the reactivity of diisobutyl aluminum hydride with respect to uh, the uh, nitrile where it can be uh, stopped at the aldehyde stage which is very different from uh, lithium aluminum hydride. Uh, on the other hand we can also use lithium trialkoxybut uh, uh, aluminum hydride where only one hydrogen is there and can also do the same uh, transformation leading uh, to the formation of aldehyde from nitrile. When we were also discussing the ester reduction to the corresponding alcohol or aldehyde, we also looked at how the uh, lactones can be uh, selectively stopped at the lactol stage. And then towards the end uh, we were uh, trying to look at the reduction of uh, tri, uh, this uh, acetylene using first lithium aluminum hydride and that led to the trans uh, olefin and I mentioned that the same reaction can be done by uh, using dibol H, um, uh, dibol H and uh, that can be stopped at uh, the uh, dibol H and it can be stopped at uh, uh, the uh, olefin stage, but then the olefin can be cis olefin. So, uh, this is how uh, we uh, ended in the last class. Now, I would like to um, tell you why is it that in the case of lithium uh, aluminum hydride we get trans olefin and in the case of dibol we get cis olefin. Of course, we discussed last time that uh, the um, uh, lithium aluminum hydride case since aluminum hydride path is negatively charged and therefore when it attacks onto the acetylene uh, the attack of the negatively charged aluminum hydride occurs from the side opposite to the side where the electron density is moving. That means the attack of the aluminum hydride occurs from let's say for example from the lower side the electron density of the pi cloud moves away from towards the upper side. In the case of diisobutyl aluminum hydride, since the uh, dibol is uh, trivalent and therefore electrophilic in the nature, that uh, reaction 
of the diisobutyl aluminum hydride does not occur unless and until the uh, pi cloud of the triple bond interacts with the aluminum hydride and makes it negatively charged. The way I have shown it by arrow. For example, in the case of lithium aluminum hydride, what we had was we had the lithium plus which was interacting with the with the triple bond say for example here. I, I can write it a little bit below so that it can be seen here it is uh, uh, as you can see that the triple bond interacts uh, in the case of uh, lithium aluminum hydride in such a fashion that the lithium plus interacts first and therefore LH4 minus attacks from the lower side. And then electron density moves to form the corresponding lithium here and uh, hydrogen with uh, ALH3 released. And this is what leads to the corresponding say ALH3 uh, minus lithium plus and R here. And then this leads upon protonation to the corresponding trans olefin. So this particular reaction triggers in such a fashion that the aluminum hydride which is already a negatively charged and therefore nucleophilic in the nature initiates the reaction so that the, the electron density moves towards the top towards the lithium plus. But that is not the case in the case of dibol where the dibol first interacts with the triple bond and in this particular case what you can imagine that you have a uh, something like, like this you have a species of this type where now the aluminum of the dibol is interacting with the triple bond and generating a kind of positive charge here where the this hydrogen migrates. That means this triple bond has essentially interacted with the dibol and making it negatively charged here. So I can rewrite this part again in the sense that you have uh, the triple bond to start with which uh, should not be written like a bent bond but then I am writing it because I want to show that you have aluminum here and negatively charged here. So you have a delta negative here and you have a sort of uh, delta negative here which is and of course you have a delta positive here. So when this is interacting here then you have an interaction leading to the same side. So basically the pi clouds it in, is interacting with the aluminum and the hydrogen from the same side and that is why we have shown uh, by arrows the interaction in this fashion. And that leads to the intermediate of this type which uh, upon workup uh, using aqueous condition uh, cleaves the uh, carbon aluminum bond and forms the cis double bond. On the other hand if we take the same intermediate in fact this intermediate can easily be isolated if it is required uh, and instead of adding water or basic conditions to cleave the carbon aluminum bond uh, if uh, it is reacted with uh, methyl lithium for example the methyl lithium forms uh, uh, reaction uh, with uh, aluminum to make uh, lead to an 8 complex and this particular 8 complex which is now negatively charged uh, has now this particular carbon atom uh, as a kind of nucleophilic carbon atom that interacts with the carbon dioxide. If we bubble carbon dioxide through it then of course this carbon aluminum bond acts like a nucleophile uh, to the corresponding uh, electrophilic carbon dioxide. And that allows the formation of 
an intermediate you can imagine that it will allow you to form the carboxylate and uh, here and of course you will have a lithium plus or the uh, other electrophilic species around. So this is the intermediate that can form which upon uh, acidic workup leads to the formation of the uh, corresponding acid alpha beta acid. But then since the, um, the hydrogen and the aluminum from diisobutyl aluminum hydride reacted from the same side of the double bond the um, already we had the, the R groups on the uh, alkene path towards cis oriented and therefore the hydrogen and the carbon dioxide they come from the same side. So there is a stereo selective um, formation of the corresponding uh, acid in, in the reduction of uh, acetylene and then eventually converting into the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated acid. On the other hand if one wants to uh, prepare uh, a, a trans alpha beta unsaturated acid then we start with the dibol which is uh, 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 trivalent and uh, electrophilic in the nature. First we add methyl lithium to it and make an alanate complex instead of uh, a uh, uh, trivalent uh, species. We have a tetravalent aluminum species which is now nucleophilic in the nature. So it behaves very similar to the lithium aluminum hydride. So in the case of lithium aluminum hydride we had the uh, negatively charged uh, aluminum species and now when this interacts with the triple bond the approaching um, negatively charged hydride uh, attack takes place uh, say for example from the bottom phase then the uh, movement of the electrons will towards the Li plus would occur from the opposite side and which eventually uh, again interacts with the trivalent uh, aluminum species which is this is the aluminum species which is a trivalent aluminum species after the hydride has been transferred and this interacts with the carbon lithium bond here leading to the formation of this particular intermediate. Now here we can see the R group here and the R group here are already uh, trans oriented and when such a uh, species reacts with the carbon dioxide as an electrophile eventually it leads to the trans alpha beta unsaturated acids. So uh, this is uh, one of the very interesting aspects of the dibol based chemistry which can uh, allow uh, transformation of uh, an alkyne to uh, uh, cis or a trans olefin depending on what one wants to. Now some more examples of uh, dibol reduction are shown here for example one can uh, of course um, use toluene as a non participating reagent at low temperature and the ester can be converted to the corresponding aldehyde. As you can see that here this, this is the same as this, this is tertiary butyl dimethyl silyl group. So, so I have written here OTBDMS in both the cases and they are basically nothing but this OSIME2 tertiary butyl. Now we can uh, convert ester at low temperature using toluene to the aldehyde this has been done in the literature and this uh, we can also take alpha beta unsaturated ester and can convert to the corresponding alcohol at uh, uh, 0 degree centigrade in, in dichloromethane. In this case as you can imagine that you will obviously use uh, more than two equivalents of the diisobutyl aluminum hydride. If one wants to uh, stop the reduction of an ester to the corresponding uh, aldehyde, uh, there are uh, methods which are other than the dibol. 
Now there is something called as Weinreb amide. It has been introduced by Weinreb. Now what happens is, uh, is such an amide is uh, like you have here carbonyl group and you have a nitrogen, but then for normal amide it is a, this could be hydrogen or it could be alkyls. But if one takes a heteroatom such as this and of course you have an R group here something different. But you have to have a heteroatom here as a substituent on the nitrogen and that is called as Weinreb amide and if such an amide is used and this of course can be easily prepared from the corresponding ester or acid halide and then when is if it is reacted with a reducing agent or any nucleophile for example in this case here diisobutyl aluminum hydride then one can easily stop the reaction at the aldehyde stage without worrying about um, over reduction. So uh, as in this example I have shown that we have uh, a double bond, we have uh, various other substituents but the reaction can easily be stopped at this particular stage. Why it is so uh, and why uh, how it is so we can look at it. Now here it is Weinrebamide R and how is it prepared? You can prepare it from the corresponding acid halide and react it with this uh, particular nitrogen um, compound where there is already a methoxy group. This is an amine, this is like ammonia derivative. So you have a methoxy and the methyl on the uh, nitrogen. When they react and they, re they form the corresponding Weinrebamide. Now when this Weinrebamide reacts with a nucleophile, say for example, I have written here R2 Li, but it can be dibol or it can be anything where R2 is a nucleophile and then this R2 attacks onto the uh, particular carbon of the carbonyl moiety here. Now what is happening in this case is essentially uh, initiating the reaction with uh, uh, the coordination of uh, the lithium plus one can put it here lithium plus and we can have such coordination and this leads to the um, increase in the electrophilicity of this particular carbon atom where the nucleophile R2 minus attacks and this stage and reaction leads to the uh, intermediate which is now stabilized by coordination. Basically here the uh, lithium coordination with the oxygen allows this tetrahedral intermediate to be stable under that condition which is against what we have done with using lithium aluminum hydride where the intermediate the tetrahedral intermediate that was formed was ionic in nature and therefore it would decompose. But here due to the coordination this does not decompose and when water is added under acidic conditions then we have the formation of this type of intermediate which then breaks in this fashion to form the corresponding carbonyl group. Now the nucleophiles which have been utilized by endravamides are alkyl or phenyl lithium, the Gignard reagents, the dibol or even lithium aluminum hydride for example and nucleophiles such as this or this where you have this nucleophilicity coming in like this. So you have nucleophilicity coming like this where you can put an amide group or an ester group onto the electrophilic site of a Weinreb amide. So uh, example which is a little bit more complicated is shown here. Then if we have an Weinreb amide of this kind where to which methyl magnesium bromide is added uh, at 0 degrees in THF. Uh, we go through this particular intermediate as you can see it here the, uh, the magnesium Br part of the Grignard reagent interacts both with the oxygen of the carbonyl and also the uh, OME of the Weinreb amide and allows the nucleophilic uh, attack 
at the particular carbon atom and that stops because of the coordination and then after the hydrolysis one gets the corresponding uh, methyl ketone. Now I also see, told that we can introduce uh, uh, a nucleophile like this here which is uh, basically derived from the corresponding ester. So if we have an ester of this type where we deprotonate here and generate the, the nucleophile like this which has a lithium plus to coordinate. So you have a lithium plus to coordinate uh, like this and the nucleophile attacks onto this carbon atom and to form the corresponding intermediate of this type where basically what we have done is this nucleophile is nothing but a nucleophile of this type here. So we have here uh, the uh, negative part coming from the uh, alpha to the ester anion and that leads to this particular carbon carbon bond formation to take place and eventually to form the beta keto ester. So this is how one can uh, stop the reaction uh, in the Weinreb amide case uh, from over reacting with nucleophiles. Now in the reductions using diisobutyl aluminum hydride, uh, if one uses alpha beta unsaturated ketones and then um, if one uh, allows the reduction to take place in the presence of uh, these kind of copper species like methyl copper or tertiary copper uh, along with diisobutyl aluminum hydride in solvents like uh, HMPA. For example, the HMPA as already mentioned earlier hexamethyl phosphoric triamide. Then what has been observed is uh, the reduction of this particular double bond to the corresponding saturated species and the hydrogen is uh, approaching the molecule from the side opposite to this particular carbon-carbon bond. Since this particular carbon-carbon bond is beta oriented and therefore the, uh, the hydrogen comes from the alpha side. It is believed that uh, this particular reagent system that is using diisobutyl aluminum hydride along with this copper species leads to the formation of uh, copper hydride which is a kind of soft hydride and therefore there is a Michael addition of uh, this hydride species to take place onto this particular enone and thus we get the corresponding saturated ketone and of course the stereochemistry is defined by the stereochemistry of this carbon-carbon bond. Now we can also carry out selective reductions of say acid chloride for example with uh, a reagent which is lithium aluminum tri-tertiary betoxyhydride. Uh, basically it has only one hydrogen and therefore uh, since it is a sterically hindered molecule it only transfers one hydrogen to this particular acid chloride leading to the formation of the corresponding aldehyde. In a similar fashion we can also use this amide which is sterically hindered and of course we can also use the same reagent that is lithium tri-tertiary betoxy aluminum hydride and uh, that proceeds via this intermediate which is now kind of stabilized because now this lithium plus will chelate with the nitrogen and will be closer to the aluminum and therefore it will not undergo decomposition and once we hydrolyze with H3O plus and that is under acidic condition then this particular species gets cleaved to the corresponding aldehyde and therefore we stop the reaction at the aldehyde stage. Before uh, diisobutyl aluminum hydride as I mentioned that ALH3 was utilized ALH3 but since ALH3 is not a, a, a very easy reagent to handle that is the reason why diisobutyl aluminum hydrides were used. So you, this was basically converted into or uh, 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 an alternative as this was used. The idea was to have a trivalent uh, uh, aluminum which is uh, electrophilic in the nature 
and that uh, initiates the reaction only after the carbonyl oxygen interacts with the aluminum. In this regard uh, various combinations have been utilized for example lithium aluminum hydride with aluminum chloride which leads to lithium chloride and, and uh, these two molecules of uh, aluminum hydride having one chlorine. So it is a mixed chloride hydride and in a similar fashion if one starts with uh, lithium aluminum hydride and uses 3 equivalents of aluminum chloride one can get 4 equivalents of aluminum hydrogen chloride which is basically having only one hydrogen. And uh, these mixed chloride hydrides act as uh, reducing agents but because of the electronegativity of the chlorine the electron density is being pulled towards the chlorine and therefore the hydride nature of these mixed chloride hydrides um, is somewhat less and therefore is a less powerful reagent than lithium aluminum hydride obviously because of the electron withdrawing nature of the chlorine that is attached to it. And therefore for example we can easily convert a, a halogen if it is a halogen compound we can convert a halogen into the corresponding hydrogen here the carbon X bond is cleaved and carbon hydrogen is bombed if uh, lithium aluminum hydride is used. But this reaction does not happen if we take a combination of lithium aluminum hydride and aluminum chloride. On the other hand for example if we take an alpha beta unsaturated ester of this type and we use lithium aluminum hydride as a reducing agent we can easily get a mixture of this uh, uh, al allylic alcohol and saturated alcohol as a mixture where oh, this is uh, somewhat larger in a measure than this but then reduction gives a mixture of both. On the other hand when lithium aluminum hydride is used along with aluminum chloride only this is formed. That means in this particular case uh, if we have uh, R group instead of uh, phenyl uh, I am just trying to write as a general way that if we have something like this and if we take a mixture of lithium aluminum hydride and aluminum chloride it could be either Al H2 Cl or it could be an Al Cl H2 that means any one of them or any one of them that interacts with the with here and the transfer occurs at this position only and there is no chance of uh, a re reduction taking place uh, in such a way that we can get this particular molecule. So therefore it is the uh, electrophilic nature of the trivalent less reactive aluminum species such as uh, this uh, aluminum H2Cl or aluminum chloro H2 which allows mild reduction to take place only of the ester moiety to the corresponding alcohol. Therefore this forms as the only product that is the case. So uh, we will uh, stop it today at this uh, stage and uh, continue further in the next class of um, where such uh, mixed hydride uh, chlorides are uh, used or and some other reducing agents are introduced for specific and selective conversions of uh, some functional groups. Uh, you can go through these uh, uh, reducing agents uh, from the books that I have mentioned and whenever there is a need I will also give the references uh, for other reducing agents and you can see these transformations understand the mechanism and we will be ready for the next class. Till then goodbye and thank you.